The AWS Lambda Power Tools Batch Processing Utility makes it easy to process a batch of messages from Amazon SQS, AWS Kinesis Data Streams, and also AWS DynamoDB Streams. It provides a simple interface to process each batch record, enables parallel processing, report batch item failures to reduce the number of retries, and also supports customizations for your business needs. In this video, let's learn how to get started using the Amazon Power Tools Batch Utility and how to use it to process a batch of messages from Amazon SQS. Hello everyone, my name is Rahul and welcome back to this YouTube channel. If you're new here, I make videos around .NET, Cloud, and DevOps. This video is sponsored by AWS and is part of my .NET on AWS series. Before we get into the Power Tools Batch Utility Library, let's see how you would process a batch of records using Lambda functions from SQS. So here in Visual Studio, I have a project Lambda Power Tools Batch, which is part of the Lambda Power Tools solution. Now, this is the solution which has the other projects that I have been using to showcase the other libraries that are part of Power Tools Library. You can see the videos in the descriptions below. So here we have the functions.cs, which has the notify customers method. Now this uses the Lambda annotations framework to build this Lambda function. Lambda annotation framework makes it extremely easy to work with Lambda function and also other AWS services. If you're completely new to it, I highly recommend checking out my video, which will be linked here and also in the descriptions below. Now the notify customers takes in the SQS event, which is coming from the amazon.lambda.sqs events NuGet package. From the SQS event, it loops through the records inside that and processes these individual record messages. Now, when processing messages from SQS, there are a couple of scenarios. Now, either all the records coming as part of this event might be processed successfully, or some of them might be processed successfully and some of them might fail, or all of the records could fail as well. By default, when integrating with Lambda function, when one message fails in a batch, the entire batch is retried. However, you can override this function by setting the report batch item failures on the Lambda integration to be true. You can do that from the AWS console. So if I navigate to one of the integrations that I have enabled, you can see here that report batch item failures is set up as yes. So you can edit this by navigating into this trigger configuration and setting this property. So once this is set up, you can allow your function to return a partial successful response for a batch of records. So if I switch back to Visual Studio, here you can see that the function is returning an SQS batch response. Now inside this instance, we are setting up the batch item failures and tracking the list of IDs that have failed to process. So anytime there is an exception in the process message async, we are adding the message ID into this batch item failures. Now, once SQS gets back this batch response, it knows which messages to keep and retry and which items to remove because they have successfully been processed. Now, I also have some additional code which starts a stopwatch and records the total time that's taken to process the messages. Now, as part of the Lambda annotations framework, we also have the serverless.template file where I have the other resources that is required for this particular function set up. So inside here, you can see there is the notify customers Amazon SQS queue. I've also set up a dead letter queue to handle the messages that's coming as failed to process into here. And I have also set up the Lambda execution role. This sets up the required permissions for our Lambda function to interact with this SQS queue. We have also set up the event source mapping, which wires up this Lambda function and also the new SQS queue that we are creating inside this. You can also see I have set up the report batch item failures as on by setting the function response type. In this case, the batch size is set up as five, which means a maximum of five records will come inside an SQS event. Now it can be less than this, but it will be always a maximum of five records. Now on the dead letter queue setup, you can see here that it is set up as a dead letter queue, which is the notify customers dead letter queue. And we have set up the maximum receive count as two, which means the message will be retried twice, after which it will be moved to the dead letter queue. I have already deployed this to my AWS account. So if I navigate here into the Lambda function and let's go to the monitor tab and let's see this in action. Now to send a batch of messages, I have written a link pad script, which is simply creating an SQS client, looping from one to 100 and creating a batch request and sending it to the notify customers queue. 
Inside here, I alternate every fifth time to add the word exception to generate the exception scenario as well. So let's send this 100 records and see this in action. So let's switch back to our Lambda logs. Let's refresh this. And you can see here that there are new log stream records. So let's navigate into one of them. And here you can see there is total of five messages and it was processed in slightly over five seconds. This also has the exception message, which will get retried again. Now this five seconds for processing is because of the artificial delay I have added in the process message async. Now all this is doing is check if the body contains the word exception and throws a new exception. Otherwise it simply writes processed message. Now if I switch over to the SQS queues, we have two queues inside here. One is the notify customers dead letter queue and the notify customers. So if I navigate to the dead letter queue and look at send and receive messages and poll for messages, you can see there is a total of 20 messages that have errored and come to this dead letter queue. This is the number of messages with the word exception from one to 100. So if I navigate to one of that, you can see that this is test exception 100. So this is the code that we are required to write when handling a batch of records from an SQS event. Now let's see how the batch utility makes it much more easier to handle batch records from SQS. The batch processing utility handles partial failures when processing batches from SQS, Kinesis, and also DynamoDB streams. Some of the key features include report batch item failures to reduce the number of retries, simple interface to process each of these batch record, and also it enables parallel processing. You can also customize the batch processor in case you need that. To start using this, let's add the NuGet package into our project. So let's right click, manage NuGet packages, and let's search for the PowerTools batch NuGet package. And let's install the aws.lambda powertools.batch processing package. So let's install. Once installed, let's create a new class to create the new function handler for this batch processing. So let's create a new class inside our same project and let's call this as batch function. Now this is going to have a similar function signature as the function.cs, so let me copy and paste that in here. So let me paste it inside our new class, and let's make sure to import the missing references. Let's remove the SQS batch response, which we no longer require. Now to start using the batch utility, as before with the other Power Tools framework, all we need to do is apply a new attribute. So let's add the attribute batch processor, which is coming from the Lambda Power Tools batch processing NuGet package. So let's add that in and let's specify the property record handler. Now this is going to take a type of the record handler that is going to process each of these messages or records inside this SQS event. So for that, let's create a new class. Let's create the public class. Let's specify notify customers record handler as the type name and let's in implement the interface isqs record handler. This again is coming from the batch NuGet package and let's implement the missing members. This has the handle async method which takes in an SQS message and returns a record handler result. So if I switch back to our function.cs, you can see that the process message async was also working on the SQS message. This is the individual message that is contained inside the event records. So let's copy and paste this exact same code and let's use this inside our new handler. So let's paste this in here. Since this is a wait, let's make sure that the function handler is also a sync. Now let's replace this record name to be message so that it works with our existing code. Now in this case, we need to return a record handler result. So let's say return await task dot from result and let's specify record handler result dot none because in this case we don't have any data to be returned. In case you want to return data, you can use the from data function from the record handler result. Now once we have set up the record handler, we can specify this type as the record handler type. So let's specify type of and pass in the type that we just created. So now this sets up the batch process record handler. However, we need to return the error IDs that's coming from this record handler. To do that, let's simply return using the SQS batch processor, which is the processor that handles the batch processing of the SQS events. Let's use the result dot batch item failure response. So let's make sure to return this type inside here as well. So let's remove the async task and simply return a batch item failure response. So if I navigate into this type, you can see that this is nothing but a list of batch item failure objects, which we were manually creating in the function.cs earlier. So you can see that was the list that we were manually creating in our function handler. Now in this case, the batch utility takes care of that. 
So with that set up, let's make sure to save this. Let's navigate into the serverless.template. Here you can see there is one more resource that is automatically created, which is the new Lambda function handler. So let's copy and paste this function handler to be wired up with our SQS. So let's open the event source mapping and let's paste the new generated handler endpoint name. So let's save this and deploy this to see this in action. So let's right click, specify publish to Lambda and specify the stack name and the bucket and click publish. The deployment is successful, so let's switch back to the AWS console. Let's navigate to the functions and refresh this. And here we have a new function, which is the batch function that we just created. So let's navigate into that and let's go to the configuration to ensure that the triggers are set up appropriately. Let's go into the monitor tab and let's view CloudWatch logs. Let's open LinkPad and send a list of 100 messages again. Now this is going to automatically get processed from our new Lambda function. So it has already picked up those messages and processing them. So if I navigate into one of these records, you can see this has processed these many messages inside here. So if I navigate into another stream, you can see that this processes some of these messages. However, there are also exception messages inside this because it has the word exception. Now, if I switch back to our dead letter queue and let's poll for messages again. And this time we have 40 messages available. This is the additional 20 from the latest batch because all of them errored from the processing. The Power Tools batch function utility makes our Lambda function handler much more cleaner. All we need to take care is the actual processing of the individual record that is coming as part of the SQS event. All the other plumbing code that we had to otherwise write to maintain the state of the batch response and the failures and tracking of them is abstracted away by this utility. All we need to do is specify this attribute and specify the type that's going to process this particular record. The batch utility also integrates with Kinesis and also DynamoDB. Now, when integrating with Kinesis, the event record is going to be different. It's going to use the Kinesis event record and it is going to use the Kinesis event batch processor instead of the SQS batch processor because that is the one that's going to handle these records. The handler is also going to implement a different interface. Otherwise, all the setup is exactly the same. The same applies for DynamoDB. It is using the DynamoDB stream record and it uses the DynamoDB db stream batch processor to return the batch item failure response the batch utility provides different error handling policy by default it derives it from the event you can set two different values explicitly one of them is continue on batch item failure which is what we saw with the sqs integration where it continues processing regardless of any errors in the batch items the other value you can set is stop on first batch item failure. This stops processing of the batch items after the first item fails to processing. This is important when processing items from a FIFO queue where the order of messages and processing might be important. The batch utility also provides a way to enable parallel processing. By default, this is turned off. However, you can explicitly turn this on on either the attribute or using environment variables as specified here. So let's switch back to our Lambda function and see how we can turn on parallel processing for this particular handler. So all we need to do is specify the property batch parallel processing enabled is equal to true and also set the max degree of parallelism. Now this takes a couple of different values. You can see here when the value of one, it says the processing is done sequentially, which is the default value. Now, if the value is greater than one, it enables parallel processing. And when the value is minus one, it enables parallelism, but it sets the count of the parallelism to be the virtual CPU count of the Lambda function. So in this case, let's set this to minus one and let's see this in action. Now, like before in the function.cs, if you want to add extra logging using the stopwatch, we can do that as well. So let's copy this. Let's come back to a batch function. Let's create a new entry point for this function handler. So let's copy this exact syntax and create this as the function handler and move this batch processor as a different function. So let's specify this notify customers as notify customers batch. Now there is no requirement that the batch processor has to be on the entry point of the function. So we can call this inside our entry point. So let's specify batch result is equal to notify customers batch and let's specify the event and the context to that. Once we have the result, we can return that as expected. Now we can wrap around this call with the stopwatch call that we copied before. So let's paste in the stopwatch call. 
Let's switch back to the function and let's also copy the code to write the total seconds and write it right after calling the notify customers batch processor. So now we have wrapped around this notify customers batch, which is handling the batch processor utility, and we are wrapping it with the stopwatch call. So let's make sure to deploy this and see this in action. So let's right click, publish to Lambda, and let's click publish. The deployment is complete. So let's send another set of 100 messages to our queue and let's see how this is getting processed. So let's navigate back to the function. Let's refresh this to see the latest log streams. Let's navigate to one of them. And here you can see that the total time to process is around three seconds. Now this has around five messages, but it took way less than five seconds that we saw before. This is because we enabled parallel processing on this particular batch. Now, if I switch over to our dead letter queue and poll for messages, you can see this now has 60 messages, which is an additional 20 from the latest batch. So the batch function utility enabled us to parallelly process it and still keep the exact same functionality as before. So to enable the parallel processing, all we had to do was add in these two properties. We could add extra code to this function handler to make this parallel as well. However, all this plumbing code is removed by the batch function utility. I hope this helps you to get started using the batch utility from the Power Tools framework. We saw how the batch utility makes it extremely easy to process messages in a batch from the SQS event source. It removes all the extra plumbing code that we had to otherwise write and just focus on the business functionality for our application. We also saw how it enables parallel processing of messages and it helps to get through the messages much quicker. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the like button. If you want to be notified of future such videos, please hit that subscribe button. It also helps me to grow this YouTube channel. Wishing all of you and your family a very happy new year. Thank you and see you soon in the next video.